We get passed by this guy, but he takes too much curb, and we switch back. Oh, and then some, some contact there. I don't know if he just didn't know he was there or not. I want to stick with this. Very close. Oh, you can't bump draft. And these... Oh, man. Super Formula Lights is one of the best series in iRacing right now. It is so amazingly close and so respectful. All of the racing has been so good. I haven't had very many problems with it. Sometimes you're in iRacing and you don't feel very good about it. Um, some incidents happen, but Super Formula is totally different than that. The racing is so close and so good. Every single time I'm in. Plus you have fixed and open at the same time in Class C, which is pretty approachable class to be in. This week at Catalonia, high, high speed corners very very fast super fun i had a great time if you get a chance to race in this series definitely it's worth the money with that said let's get into it okay catalonia let's go start here so this is a very fast circuit and this is a very fast car we get not such a great start there uh, everybody else seems to pull away a little bit from me Qualified in, I think it was 8th or 7th or something like that. Just the dirty end of the top 10. It, you can't tell from this picture. But if you look at the picture in picture in the bottom right corner, you can see the visibility from a distance. It is foggy. In fact, the practice session leading up to this just before qualifying was wet. I had wet tires on. The track was sopping. So... It's dry now, or I would probably say drying. It's not the driest thing in the world. 20 degrees track temperature, so still pretty warm. It, it says it's 0%, but it is greasy, that's for sure. And it stays like that right up to the very end. Uh, we get some nonsense happen in that corner. Uh, we're falling down the order, but passing people at the same time, so I wouldn't listen much to the relative. We almost go into the back of... Um, the number six there. He does pull away from us, but only because I had to slam on the brakes. Cone in the middle of the road, so obviously somebody was off there. Again, this is a very fast circuit, uh, especially turn two and the last half, or the last bits of the corner. Uh, turn nine, 11, 12, 13, uh, 11 slow, but 12 and 13 are supposedly flat out. I find the hardest corner. Oop, there we go. He goes off. So we're moving up the order again. And then we have somebody going to the pits here. Obviously sustain, sustain some damage. So again, moving on up the order. I think we end up in 10th. So we've only lost a few places. Again, we were very slow off the line. Round in the first corner. Breaking out of the 100 mark. Trying to carry the speed little yellow curb off-putting uh, they really don't want you to cut that corner this corner is so fast I'm surprised that you don't have to lift off here because these cars despite being a pretty small engine are very very quick and the to be honest they're handled pretty well they got the they got the damn downforce this is uh, I get them mixed up the 20 minute one is the fix no 20 30 minute is fixed this must be open Again, I'm running stock stuff. All I do is put uh, this track. I put a little bit of brake bias to the rear. I found locking up the fronts, the inside fronts, uh, was pretty common. Uh, so I brake biased a little bit to the rear. Aside from that, I haven't changed anything really. So uh, back up into eighth. So heading around the second lap. We get passed by this guy, but he takes too much curb, and we switch back. Pearson's much faster than us, but it's just about really handling this track. There is certainly a racing line because off track is very greasy. So any sort of move you're going to be trying to make is not going to go well. My most feared corner is the final corner, corner 13. Uh, it just always feels wrong to me. Uh, maybe this is the bottom split. No, I think there's only two sli two splits for this one. So there's the top and this one. So we are technically in the bottom split. But it is, uh, for what it is, it's very racy. Uh, respectable racing, too. I don't suspect we'll see too many incidents, aside from people going off track. 
and just whoopsies. And the race before this, I really, really tried. I tried to get uh, a wet race in because I wanted to be able to do a full one. Unfortunately, I collected myself and somebody else into the final corner. It was just so greasy. The water hangs down on the inside and that outside line there is super tricky. Uh, he went around the outside and I locked up and crashed into him. So I only made it about six laps into that. That was fixed, so I believe it was even longer. So the chances of me finishing a full, it was, and it was not a little bit wet, it was wet, wet. We all had wet tires on and it was tiptoeing around. We were doing 204s, so that's how wet it was. And uh, right now, 130, 135 is what I have. And I do end up getting some pretty good lap times here. We do a 134 1, which is, in my opinion, fairly respectable. So we end up getting passed by Harrison there, but because of people dropping out, we end up gaining a spot since uh, last we checked our position. It's going to fly around a whole bunch, and we do get a really good run on on here. Again, that last corner is super duper hard. And we get a pass going into the first corner. And as you can see, looking in the rearview mirror, we actually clear him and are able to go into the braking zone. So back up into sixth. Again, getting that corner is super important. Although if you get it too good you have to let off a little bit going into turn two uh, turn three is also super important people run wide here i always find to say tight is better under the bridge i lock up a little bit common little lockups happen for me a lot so it's going to be a thing throughout this race oh and i try to defend the inside a little bit there but he ends up going around the outside on me again big lockups from me I will say, overall, my performance is pretty good this race. It's not really uh, super bad. I get some a bad run in through there, too. So as we're going around here, I believe we have the blue car behind us right now. I can't remember, though. I don't get a rear view mirror in the replays. You guys will get one because I record one, but... Yeah, it should be a blue and white-ish car. So, uh, us, the two black cars and the blue car, we're all going to be mixed together through the rest of the race. Uh, we end up, we're faster than some, slower than others, and, and there's quite a few mistakes that still end up happening. So, overall, in sixth, gained a position, or stayed in sixth despite being passed. Uh, people in the front uh, keep going off. Not anything major. Harrison is passing for fourth, uh, for between fourth and fifth up there. Battling out with the black cars. Again, super important to get this corner good. I find my lap is a totally different lap. I talked about cascading a few videos about uh, go, and that's kind of what this is. One mistake will cascade into another. But on the opposite side of that, uh, doing well in a corner will cascade. So your lap will become faster throughout all of it, despite, uh, or not despite, because of your... Uh, your good corners early in the lap. You carry a lot more speed, braking points are different, you're able to, the flow of the car is, because there's a way to do this track correctly, but if you're going slow in the first one, like running wide there, throws me off for the rest of the lap, because I'm not, I should be in fifth before I get to that apex, and it makes it so I'm really slow, so anyway. And that means I'm not up to the total uh, speed, I should be in sixth way before I get to my braking spot. And because of me being slower, I'm not where my braking point should be, so I'm trying to guess where it will be, because it'll be a little bit later, because I'm ultimately going a little bit slower. So I try to brake late, and I get it wrong. That's what I mean by cascading, as you make mistakes, things go differently throughout the lap, and now because of that little mistake, I'm not going as fast into the straight. And Really, it's not going to be reset until you get to heavy braking zones. Turn 10, turn 1. Other than that, there's uh, turn, turn 5 a little bit. But again, you can really carry a lot more speed than you should down in there. So, looking through turn 1, and I kind of reset a little bit. I'm, I'm a lot better through there. Or at least, moderately good. So, as we move along, the track starts to clear up a little bit, but we're still staying pretty foggy. Uh, about halfway through right now. We get one of the cars in front of us, locking up. You can see Harrison is gone in third. He is 
gapping. Both these cars. I think one of the black ones is one of them made a mistake. He's back with the blue car now. So they're fighting out back. And I'm trying to battle up here with this car. Uh, the other black car of Michael. So what's going on with him is that we're going to start fighting. Uh, he gets some corners wrong. And I'm coming up to the back of him. I will say I'm pretty good in the Mazda at passing. I'm not good at passing in this uh, super formula yet. I don't have the race experience just yet to be really comfortable to know when the moves are possible. And it's really a lot of that locking up is the issue. Breakpoints are iffy on this car. It's very sensitive to track conditions. So because it's so greasy offline, I really don't know where that braking is. So putting a 1 third at 34.3, so pretty consistent in the 134s. 133 is where you're having particularly good laps and 132s are possible most certainly so he has a lockup event there and we're really close to him but i'm not able to you can't really pass in turn three coming out of turn three you can but going into turn three is sketchy there's it's odd because it's very wide there but you can't really make the move there he goes super early on the brakes there and i have to take evasive action so turn three is not a place you can really pass it's wide there but it's it's really only one racing line and now i'm braking super early because i don't know what he's going to be doing and as a result of this seventh and eighth are catching us if there wasn't anybody in front of me i could just kind of take off and and uh and be quick Again, I got a good run on him here. He seems to be super nervous. That uh, turn nine can be really uh, sketchy. If you don't get it just right, it will fire you off the track. Uh, despite being a... Oh, he gets really wide there. That, that one really wants to push you wide. It's actually easier to take that corner in the wet because the wet lines around the outside. I find all these corners really, really want to whip you out. Again, I almost lose it there. I was really close. Again, he goes defensive on the inside here. I stick to my line. I don't really want to follow him. There's surprisingly not that much draft here. I'd be super brave on the brakes there, breaking out the 100 board. Again, I had to let off there yeah, because I didn't want to go in the back of him. Very tight racing. I would say very respectable too. I, I find what we were doing pretty good. No real big accidents or anything like that for me or anybody else. In fact, this whole track, I like Catalonia. It's, it's uh, very predictable. Which is how I would explain it as a Formula One track too. It's kind of predictable. Boring even in Formula One. Too. So I get a good run on him here. Try to go up the inside, but I just... I can't hold the speed and avoid contact there. So if I was able to hold close to him, I would be able to dive down the inside here. Not able to. Fortunately, he goes a little bit wide here. I like to stick to the inside of this corner. And I think he let me go, or he braked really early. He was kind of compromised. I was on the left of him, so he couldn't really go to the normal racing line. And there's not much of a... of a... I have a double follow in through there, so. So, up into fifth. Wah. Very scary in through there. Luckily, he also got that corner wrong, so. Despite that huge mishap there on the on the last corner, I got a 134.158. So, fast, but not my fastest lap. Very consistent I was through here. Low 134s through the whole race, pretty much. And some pretty big incidents from me. And that was following somebody who was holding me up so I definitely have 133s and again you see uh, Harrison who's one of the quickest here doing 132s so I'm sure even faster than that is possible although you would have to be very good at trail breaking here and very brave it didn't take me long to get this track down pat although I do know Catalina again Formula One has been here for a long time and I felt this is really good for uh, for testing out this car, as is 
I've, this is only my third or fourth race in it, and I really don't know the, the limitations of it, but it really sticks. It sticks to the track really well. I'd say better than the F4s, but still pretty good. Tight on the line. Tight, tight, tight. I like to stay tight in here. Other people run wide and, and swoop in. I don't know. I like the tight corner. I like to be able to straighten the car up. In through here is very hard. You can't carry speed in through there, or it will spit you off into the dust. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of runoff here. Quite a bit of curbs, too. That curb is particularly dangerous. A lot of the curbs have uh, the white and red patterned ones, which are pretty high, leading into green. That last one on the inside, there is no green. It is literally bottomed out. It makes an awful noise. Breaking even later than the 100 board there, and hitting that yellow sausage curb, which are particularly dangerous. You can hit though, so 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, all right behind me. It looks like it's kind of a train, but I'm not really holding them up that much. We're all fairly the same, 34, low 134s, uh, 133s. If I would have to put a word to Catalonia, each track for me does two things. The stories inside of the race and kind of the theme of the track. Uh, last week was very busy uh, at Hungaro Ring, and I would say Monza is just like powerful, powerful straights and being able to have, handle heavy braking zones. Or as I say, Catalonia is about being brave. If you're brave and you know you're going to make the corner, you don't have to turn very much. It's, it's about being very smooth into the corners. Uh, we're being challenged for fifth place here. He's just barely behind us. Breaking at the 100. And I let him go. I believe this is the other black car, not the same guy passing us back. Although, yes, it's the other guy, because Michael was the the second uh, black car. And Kevin is the one in the blue and the white. Lock up there a little bit. So down into sixth. But I would say being brave is about Catalonia. If you're brave and you know that you're going to make it through the corners, you definitely can hold your speed uh, and not turn in as much. But if you got it wrong, boy oh boy, it's going to send you. And the Clo the racing isn't super close here, but the biggest difference for me when you're racing between this and the MX-5s are the amount of, uh, of catch-up that happens here. If you make a one-corner mistake, and oh, I make a one-corner mistake there, big time, go off the track. If you make a one-corner mistake in the MX-5, you're going to lose some time, but not that much. You can actually keep your position and still make a mistake. If you make a mistake here, you're losing places and seconds and tens of seconds. Whereas in some of the slower series, one little mistake in a corner isn't that much. So because of my last mistake last corner, we have Kevin all over the back of us. I find the last corner, again, it's always the last corner for me, is really, I try to be super brave on the brakes here, but he ends up being on the outside of me can't make a move around the outside there so I end up keeping the position the outside becomes the inside becomes a compromised heavy speed turn so not the best thing to do there uh, because the last corner is so compromised for me I'm, I'm really it's about being brave and I'm not brave uh, my straight is not really that good and that's kind of where a lot of the speed comes down here it's one of the few there's quite a few places to pass here, but not good places. Uh, I would say you have to be really argy-bargy. Despite being a wide, smooth, very easy transition track, there's not a lot of overtaking. And that is true for Formula 1 too. It's 
Not a lot of overtaking here happens here at Catalonia. It's mostly waiting for other people to make mistakes. Because it is such high speed corners, tiny mistakes tend to be big mistakes, so it can happen. I'd be interested to be around here in a Formula One car to see how fast you can actually go in some of these corners. I get that corner right that time, flat out. Across the line. Uh, 134.3. So not blisteringly fast, but still not too bad. Practice here was. It was okay. It was minimal. I didn't really do that much. Again, I know Catalina pretty well as far as the track layout goes, so there was no having to learn where I was going and stuff like that. I'm not sure if staying on the inside of that corner is faster or letting it run wide. Everybody else lets it run wide, but you know, we're not in upper splits here, so I don't really know if technique is something I should be learning from other people at this point. But still, hanging around in the middle of the top 10. If this was a super long race, I suspect that I wouldn't stay here for the whole race. I think my times are more conducive of 8th or 9th, but we are staying within touch. I'm feeling, definitely feeling the pressure at this point though. come around the last corner and I just make a mistake and that compromises this whole corner and I do not want to crash in the last so I let him go I had to it's just I couldn't risk uh, crashing out in the last lap to be fair Kevin was much faster than me for that race uh, he deserved that seventh place or that sixth sorry came seventh Okay, incidents. Let's take a look. So we don't get a very good start. I should fall down the order quite badly. Into turn three, I think this is. Loses the back end. Almost takes out the brawn looking car there and then does take out that guy. Oh no, that's unfortunate. So this is him. He just goes, he almost got missed him. Wheel damage there. That was ahead of us too. Into here, that's the corner that will spit you out. Just a little bit of an off track there. It's also ahead of us. Way too much speed in there and actually clips the guy in front. Oof, it was rough. I don't think they sustained any damage though. Nice livery. Again, getting spit off the track. That will end your day. That was on the first lap there. We end up going by him. Spit off on that last corner, that's what can happen. Oh, and then some some contact there. I don't know if he just didn't know he was there or not. I want to stick with this. Very close. Oh, you can't bump draft. And these... Oh, man. You can't... Why is he breaking so early there? That was crazy. Was that intentional? Oh, hold on. Let's go back. I want to see the guy in front. Now, this guy is being... First of all, this is where it all kind of starts. He's there. He's alongside. Let's go into the cockpit. He's there. Damage. Instantly. So you break at the 100 board here. Oh, he's pushing him. Wow, yeah. No, he didn't. Did he let off? So 6,900 RPMs up to 6th, 62. No, he didn't let off. They just had an awful, awful accident. God, that was, that was terrible. Okay. Let's move on. I think they both sustained pretty heavy damage there, and then a bunch of people were compromised. Uh, this guy ends up going off in the first corner. That's where I go by. Uh, this is the guy with the damage. These are the two black cars fighting with each other up front, and he ends up going off. We have the bronze-colored car here. 
Again, lots of people just getting it wrong. I will say, throughout this race, it is exceedingly greasy. It's difficult to tell by looking at it, but the track is not... It is not a fully dry track. Again, off at the last corner there. That's what happens if you get that big bump wrong there. This is off of the sea behind, getting lots of places wrong. That's when wheel damage, you're pretty much done. Black car, again, a little bit of red on him. Getting it wrong. Oh, nice save. Oh, never mind. He almost saved it, though. Hmm, that wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, that's it. Well, that wasn't that bad after all. So, not so bad. Uh, we only had that one real big incident down the main straight, which was kind of questionable in my mind. Okay, let's take a look at results. I've hidden my fat head so we don't have to look at it. So we were actually in the bottom split. There were three splits, my bad, sorry. Uh, let's take a look. So average lap time from the fastest driver was 133.9 with a fast lap of 132. Let's take a look at the middle split, which was eh, not that far off. And then the fastest one, 131s. Average lap time, aver average lap time, 131, and then below him, kind of average, 132. So about a second, maybe a second and a half faster. So really, not that much slower. There's not a lot of time to be gained there. I was putting in, like, yeah, probably like two seconds slower. So yeah, I guess there is a bit there. So the strength of field of this particular race that we were in was 1,033, a bit higher than what I am. Again, when the road and open wheel was split up, I was at a, I was at a bad place. I don't want to talk about it. So we ended up getting double green, safety rating of 0.16, and an I rating change of 52. Ended up finishing in seventh place with only two incident points. Full laps completed. Uh, completed. Best lap was lap 10. We were 27, 20, yeah, 27 seconds off the pace, but really close to Kevin ahead of us, who I think was probably overall a faster drive than us. Yeah, 133.5. So biggest loser here. Yeah, last place, Ray. But the second last place, pretty close as well. Those guys went off very early. And then biggest winner. Poo, poo, poo. 55, 50, 61, 87, third place from Mark. Harrison, who is that quick guy in the white and blue, ended up finishing in second place with the fastest lap. So he was quite good. He's from the Midwest. No incident points. So quite interesting. Great course. Love a Catalonia. And this series by far, out of the three that I'm doing, the MX-5, GT4s, and uh, this, Super Formula Lights, it was a fixed race. Oh, my bad. Um, this is by far my favorite. The racing is so tight, and these cars are so much fun. Anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in. Hope to see you guys next time.